This video is for educational purposes only. Only test your own hardware. Doing otherwise is illegal. Don't be a skid. What's going on, you guys? It is The Talking Sasquatch, and it's great to have you back. Now recently I've been hearing more and more about all the updates that have been going on to the Bruce firmware for M5 stack devices. I've mentioned it time and time again, M5 stack makes the card pewter. This thing is 30 bucks and it is an absolutely amazing little piece of tech. Well the guys over at Bruce were trying to make this little card pewter pretty much as capable as a Flipper Zero with the Wi-Fi board. Now that's no small feat because the Flipper Zero itself is going for like $200 now and the Wi-Fi board's like 35. Now this little $30 piece of tech doesn't have all of the functionality of a Flipper Zero, but M5 has an entire ecosystem of sensors and add-ons for it that actually can make it pretty competitive. So I made my way on over to the Bruce firmware Discord and those guys were super cool. And they mentioned that they were able to get the Bruce firmware not only onto the card pewter and other M5 stack devices, but on some other boards by other creators. So that got me thinking. They introduced the idea of putting Bruce firmware onto something like the AWOC Dual Touch V2. So that got me thinking, if I can put Bruce on something like this, maybe I can put on a launcher that'll allow me to switch back and forth between firmwares. And that's what we're gonna be doing today. We're gonna hack a bunch of our hacking tools, including this $12 cheap yellow display put launchers and different tools on all sorts of cool stuff. Because not everybody has access to so many tools. So being able to make one tool do a thousand different things is so awesome. It's a win-win for everyone. All right, that's enough intro for me. It's time for some Hackception. Let's go. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is actually show you how to update your card pewter with launcher and all the cool stuff. But since it's an M5 device, we can actually use M5's own software called M5 Burner to do that. Part of the reason why I love M5 Stack so much is because they have an entire ecosystem. It's super, super easy to flash everything. They've got their own software. Literally, couldn't be easier. All right, so let's hop on down to the desktop and get this done. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is head on over to docs.m5stack.com, which is of course currently under maintenance. Now, that's not really gonna get us hung up. You really can't miss the download link that's on there. You're gonna be downloading M5 Burner for whatever operating system you're operating on. Of course, I've already got that downloaded, so we can close out of here and it'll open up M5 burner. So very important, just as we always say, we've got the card computer here, we have to plug it into USB. Now as always, anytime you're gonna plug something into USB, this is a USB-C cable, make sure it's one that carries data. Every single video I say this, make sure it carries data, if it doesn't, ain't gonna work. So go ahead, plug this in, do do do, and Already it turns on, so you don't even have to turn the device on, it just shows up, and it shows right there, it said COM port 11. So that's perfect, we know we're good. So we're gonna scroll down to, do to do card pewter on the side here, because that's what we have, and these are the apps that you can install for the card pewter. So let's scroll on down, so M5 Launcher, that's what we're gonna be installing today. Let's just do a quick scroll down and see what else is available, because I always like to get caught up on the cool stuff that's on the M5 Burner app. So let's see, here we have Bruce that we're talking about, Nemo, so there's, Drop my device, ah oh, crap, <laughs> disconnected. What's kind of interesting is there's a few different firmwares that kind of do the same thing. They're all kind of based around the idea of Just Call Me Coco's Marauder. Now Marauder was actually one of the first things ported over to M5 devices. When I first got my M5 buyer, that thing did almost nothing. So they ported apps like Marauder over. So what happened from there is that different developers decided they're gonna take some of the code from Marauder and make their own applications and they make it more conducive to things like the card pewter because obviously this has a really small screen. So, you know, some things really need to change to make it more useful. So that's where things like Bruce and Nemo came from. Now there's also projects like Evil Card Pewter. Now that was made by the other one and that is pretty much its entirely own project from scratch. I've been watching him build up for ages. It is phenomenal, definitely check that one out. But yeah, you can see Marauders on here as well. Then we have other cool stuff like uh, the Ultimate Remote, which actually works super, super good if you wanna turn things off with a remote. Don't let the middle school kids find out about that one. And then we have Shark Firmware, another kind of Numo Bruce kind of vibe. Then um, we've actually gone over some of this. They have Doom for Card Pewter, which is super freaking cool. The M5 Card Pewter Web Radio. Now I've played with this before. It's actually really good. Everything on M5 I 
really love. That's why the card cuter is one of my favorite devices ever. Card skimmer detector, very cool. All these are super, super useful. Hey, Ghost ESP is ported over. That's very cool. Mini Winamp, that looks cool. I loved Winamp back in the day because that was really the only MP3 player there was. So you know, everyone's played with Winamp. All right, so I could do this for days and days and days. Let's scroll all the way back up and throw a launcher on there so we can show you how this works. All right, so we're going to go ahead and install a launcher. Just click download. It'll take a second to download, then click burn. Nah, nah, nah. Unofficial firmware, so it's giving us a little bit of a warning, but no problem there. And uh, start. So again, this is the reason why I love M5 stack devices, because this could not be easier. I click two buttons, download and install, and here it's going. Literally, couldn't be easier. Waiting for burn, burn successful, click here to return, and awesome, it's already on my device. So I'm gonna actually switch to the top-down camera for the rest of this, so I can show you some of the cool stuff we're gonna be doing today. All right, let's go. All right, introducing the card pewter. So, for any of you who doesn't know what this thing is already, this is, again, a $30 little card computer, which is running on an ESP32 S3 right in here, and it is incredibly capable. It's very, very cool. You can see in the back right there some of the things that it actually does. These little holes right there actually fit a uh, LEGO Technics plugs, so you can actually attach it to stuff, which is super useful. You've got a Grove connector right there on the side. You can toggle between 5-volt in and out. Very cool. And then on the top here, you've got a couple buttons, reset button and the go button. You've got your on off switch and then right there is IR. So it has infrared as well. It's very, very cool. So let me go ahead and power it on with the switch here. And then you'll see a cool little animation for M5 launcher. If we press a button right there, it's going to let us drop into the menu mode. So let me uh, let me adjust the brightness on here so we can see what's going on. So that looks a little better. It's not fantastic. It's really hard to focus on these things, but the brightness, but yeah, we can see we have SD, we have OTA, WUI, which is your web interface, USB and config down at the bottom. So what we're gonna do is actually go to OTA and it's gonna scan for my Wi-Fi. All right, we'll select my Wi-Fi, which I already have the password saved. And now it's gonna go into the repository. So right here, you can see all of the stuff that we can just go ahead and download. We have Connect4, Anarch, I don't know what all this stuff does, the audio streaming app, bad card, Bitcoin wallet, but let's go over to Bruce for card Peter. So let's just go ahead and install that. Press the enter button and then we have options. One of the cool things is you can actually install either directly to it so it's gonna boot or you can download it to the SD card. If you download it to the SD card, it'll just allow you to install it as you go. I'll just show you. So we're gonna download the SD, it takes a second. It says connecting, now it says downloading. It's impossible to read because again, exposure is so hard on this stuff. Now I guess waiting to download brings us to a great segue to today's sponsor. PCBWay. PCBWay is your one-stop shop for PCB design, manufacture, CNC, 3D printing, sheet metal fabrication, and more. Any project you have, PCBWay has got you covered. They have engineers on staff that are willing to help you every single step of the way. It couldn't be easier. Also, don't forget about the module store. I always talk about the module store, the module store, but there is so much cool stuff on there. I can get lost just looking through it. So for anything you need PCB related, PCBWay has got you covered. Make sure to check them out for a free instant quote. Thank you so much PCBWay for your extended support. You guys are absolute legends. Let's get back at it. Hey, and now we're downloaded. Fantastic. So we go back here. I think escape. I can go back. There we go. Escape, escape. Now at the main screen here, we can go to SD card and then we can scroll down through all the cool stuff that's in here. And yes, it does play Doom. And we're going to go for Bruce.bin, which is what we just downloaded. We're going to select that. We're going to install it. And yeah, that should install Bruce just like that. So we can go swap back and forth between firmware. Super, super simple. It literally couldn't be easier. A few moments later. Hey, there we go. We've got our exposure adjusted a little bit more so we can see. But yeah, this is Bruce. It's very, very cool. So let's just go through and show you some of the stuff Bruce can do and why it's so useful and why we're going to install it to a bunch of stuff. Because again, this is a really fun program. So if we go to IR, we can see our TV be gone. So what a TV be gone basically is, is it's going to go through and it's going to go to America's. Here we go. Yeah, so what this is doing right now, and I'm going to cover this just in case, it's going through and running all of these different commands that are trying to turn a TV off. <laughs> So chances are, if you have a TV in nearby proximity and you run this, it's going to turn off. Keep it away from the middle schoolers. Let's stop this. 
All right, so now we have Bluetooth. So we have a bunch of different things we can do on Bluetooth. So Apple Juice, it's pretty much just a cute little pun. This is gonna send a whole bunch of spam to iOS devices, i.e. the Apple part. Now we have Swift Pair. That's gonna show a bunch of Swift pairing stuff, I believe, to Windows. We have Android Spam, so it's the same exact thing on Android. We have the Sour Apple Crash. So Sour Apple Crash is basically an iOS 17 vulnerability that was found that you could actually crash iOS 17 phones with this Sour Apple Crash. Now they have patched it. So that's one of the good things about showing off some of these vulnerabilities is because they will eventually fix these things if they're showing off enough. And then Bluetooth Maelstrom, I think is uh, basically kitchen sink. So that'll just throw a whole bunch of uh, Bluetooth stuff out there. Let's go back down and see what else we can do. We have Wi-Fi, we have Evil Portal, which is going to put out a uh, captive portal. So one of the things you really want to be careful of is you never want to enter credentials into anything that's not a protected, secure Wi-Fi, because something like this can open an evil portal. And then if you enter your credentials in it, it just gets captured by the device. So be very careful. Bruce has added so much functionality to this firmware that even I'm running into stuff I haven't seen quite yet. Bad USB, which is effectively the same as DuckyScript. So it's just going to allow you to, if you plug this into a computer, it's going to allow remote code execution. So you you can run all sorts of automation scripts. It's very useful. Uh, you can use it as a keyboard or a microphone. And then Open Haystack. I'm assuming what Open Haystack is, is it allows you to track this device very similar to like a tile or an AirTag. So again, very cool, which makes again, a $30 device incredibly, incredibly capable. Now, obviously we can do all this with our M5 stack, but we can also install Nemo to other devices, which I think is very cool. So let me go ahead and grab a different device and then show you the process of flashing onto that. All right, so here we have an ESP32 Marauder by Just Call Me Coco. This is a V6, very cool, printed a case for it. And hello. Uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and put Bruce on this bad boy. So we're gonna do pretty similar to what we did before. And we're gonna plug in our Knowing data that works, uh, USB-C, pop this on over right here. And this is running ESP32 Marauder by Just Call Me Coco. Very cool, freshly updated, but we're gonna go ahead and flash something else to this. So let's put this down and hop back over to the desktop and get this done. All right, from here, what we're gonna do is go to Bruce.computer and pretty much just go ahead and click the install button. So this is already plugged in, so we know that. Go ahead and scroll down here, so flashing instructions. Uh, we're gonna go with latest release. We're gonna go down to custom boards here, and this is a Marauder V6. Go ahead and click install. It's gonna pop over this little COM4 port. Click connect, and let's see if this works. Awesome, so far so good. We're gonna erase the device. Click next, click install. Screen goes blank, we know it's doing the right thing. And with any luck, in a minute or two, this thing will be done and flash with Bruce. More moments later. Hey, and now we can see we're booting. We have Bruce firmware, very, very cool. So let's move forward. We can go through all the cool stuff on here again. And we have our BLE, our radio frequency, all the same stuff. But now we have this on a completely different device. This is so, so cool. I love this. So the next thing I was wondering is, hey, can we put that same M5 launcher on there? And turns out we actually can. So let's hop on over to this website. Let me close Bruce. Let's open launcher, this one. Here we go. Close that. Now what we're gonna try to do is actually flash the launcher onto here. So let's try to do this exact same thing. We're gonna go to others. We're gonna go to custom boards. And then this is the Marauder OG and V6. Perfect, let's click that and then connect. Let's see how this works. UART controller, okay, connect. And with any luck, this will work and we'll be able to launch her on it. So install Marauder, awesome. Erase device, let's just go ahead and do that. Okay, install. So this should put the M5 launcher onto Marauder, which would be extremely useful. <laughs> to initialize that's not surprising so let's just go back these things happen sometimes i'm just gonna go ahead and well is it gonna work erase device is it gonna work do do do, do. pairing yeah. hey this time it feels like being good absolutely very good hey here we go we have the launcher this is really awkward but here we have m5 launcher so cool so cool what i'm gonna do for the sake of uh not being super annoying let's go to configuration okay yeah let's use the actual controls go to orientation and then i think portrait zero 
There we go, way easier to see now. So this is super cool. So let's go ahead and go to OTA. Oops, again, I keep forgetting how this menu works. So I try to stop making mistakes, select, Let's go to OTA, select that, scanning, getting info for the repository, cool. And one of the interesting things, there's not as many options to install for these things. There's not as many apps that are actually native for this kind of form factor. So that's why we only have the four apps on here, but we have Bruce, we have the launcher that we just did, and then we have Marauder. So we can just go ahead and select that and options here. Are there any options here? Oh yeah, here we go, V6, select that right there. And then we're gonna download to the SD card, just like we did before, select. And let's see if this works. Failed creating file because I am not sure why. Download failed. If OTA install works. Okay. I think there's an issue with my SD card that's on here. That's what's going on. So that's what happens when you have crappy SD cards, folks. My fault. But yeah, it's going to go ahead and install Marauder. Very, very cool. So while we're doing that, let's go ahead and throw a launcher on the AWOC board real quick and see how that fares. I still just love this launcher script. It looks so good with this. Alrighty, so here we have the dual touch V2. And for this one, we're gonna have to unscrew the antenna because this is the USB port we want. Go ahead and plug this into our USB. And there we go. And that should turn on. So we've got an older version of ESP32 Marauder running on here. And actually, let me fix the focus. All right, cool, a little bit easier to see. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna reload our launcher page over here. We're gonna go back to custom boards. And this is the AWOC Dual Touch V2. Select that, connect. And let's see if this works just as we thought everything else did. Error, serial port is not ready. Okay, no problem. Let's try that again. Now this says failed to initially SD card. We know that because there is no SD card put into this right now. Go ahead, click connect. Let's see if this is a little bit happier. All right, install AWOC Dual Touch V2. Next, install, and this looks much more promising. Hey, now we have the M5 launcher. Oh my God, I love that so much. It's so freaking cool. So we have all the same options as before. Obviously the SD card's grayed out because there is no SD card in there but this is absolutely freaking awesome. Makes a really cool addition to your Flipper Zero. Actually, let's go ahead, let me unplug this and get this thing actually put into a Flipper because I just want to see how cool this is. All right, so here is my Flipper. Take the Wi-Fi cord off and then shake my camera as much as humanly possible. Plug this into the top. Oh, it feels so good. Look at that go. And I believe we have to go into our GPIO, GPIO, and then five volt on. And that should launch it up. Oh my God, that is literally the coolest thing ever. I love this so much. Like how freaking cool is that? Now let's go ahead and get this running on a cheap yellow display to kind of round out all of our fun little hacking tools. And of course, here is our cheap yellow display. This thing came out really good. I love this translucent purple and it's got kind of like a sparkly effect plate that I printed it on. But yeah, these things are absolutely amazing. And again, they're still only like 12 or 13 bucks on Amazon or AliExpress, 12 or 13 bucks on AliExpress. And it's got launcher. I mean, come on, this is so freaking cool. This is absolutely the most fun you can have for like 12 bucks. And here's our Bruce firmware running. I've got it in portrait mode, because I don't know, with the wire coming out, I think it just works well. The UI looks fantastic. Everything is just ported over. This is so much fun. Now, one thing to notice is that these cheap yellow displays, they don't have much of anything for actual like tools. It's just the ESP32 up there. There's no IR or anything else, but so things like FM radio, that's not gonna do anything. GPS, there's no GPS unit on here. So what's cool though, is you can add some peripherals. You can definitely add GPS to these. You can add stuff. So you can actually make this cheap yellow display into most of that first Marauder we showed just with a few bucks of add-ons and some know-how. So very, very cool. So yeah, it's just that simple to take a relatively simple tool and give it a ton more functionality. Now, over time, they're gonna be adding more and more stuff to the launcher so you can switch back and forth between even more stuff. And for now, there's actually a hack because what you can do is you can just download the bins for the firmware that you want to your SD card and then install them using the flasher. So I'm hoping to see things like Nemo and Ghost ESP and uh, Evil Card Pewter, all those ported over, and that would just be so freaking cool. Props again to the folks over at Bruce you guys are doing great work and same for all of the developers on this platform. All of the firmware developers make all of this stuff so much more fun. So without you guys, none of this could happen. Thank you so much for watching. You guys are absolute legends. As always, please make sure to like, comment, subscribe, smash that like button, and we'll catch you next time.